Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelby and I'm so happy that you're here. I'm back on my floor for another video for you guys. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to study abroad. I've been getting so many questions about how do you study abroad because I am going on semester at sea spring 22. Crossing my fingers when I say that by the way because it's still up in the air and I don't know if I am going, but like I'm going, if that makes sense. Like I've put down my deposit, I am planning to go, but it's COVID willing. If it does happen, I will be the first voyage back since I think the last one was like 2020. Yeah, the last one was in 2020. But I have learned so much through the study abroad application process that I just wanted to share it with you guys. Even if I don't go, I feel like this information is so valuable to you all. So before I get started, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we are gonna jump right into this video. So the first thing you guys need to do if you're thinking about studying abroad is you need to find out what programs your university supports. So not every single university will allow you to go certain places and do certain things. So you need to find out what your university will allow you to do. An easy way to do this is going to the study abroad office or the office of international affairs. Sometimes your college will also have study abroad fairs that will be like in your college and they'll just like be set up and there'll be tables and you can go to every single table and like get a little flyer and see what the different options are. That is how I found out about SAS is there was a table and it had it on there and I googled it and I like looked into it more and I was like this is so cool I want to do it and then I saw people on YouTube and I just fell down a rabbit hole. <laughs> so hopefully your college will support things like SAS, but you'll never know. So you gotta go find out. After you find out, you are going to apply to study abroad. So basically what that means is you're just going to have to make sure that everything is squared away. Um, you can't have any academic dishonesty or like any, I think it's like, what's the word I'm looking for? I think it's like academic something where it's like you can't have anything bad on your record so you cannot be suspended you can't be expelled you can't like have anything bad on your record for college this can also include things like roommates and stuff so just be careful about that you also have to make sure that your major lines up and that you are still taking all the classes that you need to. For me personally, I saved all of my electives for my semester at sea so that I could take them because my major is nutrition and semester at sea just does not offer nutrition classes. They offer nutrition courses but they just don't add up to like what I need to fulfill my degree. But you're going to want to meet with your academic advisor to make sure that you can go and they're also going to tell you what classes you can take. And if you're in any special programs, like I am on a leadership scholarship which gives me a leadership minor, I had to get cleared from my director that I could go and he said yes. So after you get it all squared away with your advisor, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to apply to that program. So for semester at sea, it was super easy. All I had to do was apply. I submitted my transcript. I submitted a letter from my school saying I could go. I also had to write an essay and it was like, why do you want to like go? Or like what will like culturally change you or something? I forget the specific question, but it's going to be like related to your program most likely. So you just write it, I think it was like maybe not even 500 words, it was super simple. Obviously I tried hard on it, but like don't think too much about it because you will most likely be fine. <laughs> and then you should hear back soon enough that you're accepted. So then after you're accepted, you're gonna start working with the program and back with your university and you're gonna just be filling out paperwork. You might have to apply for some visas. I know for me personally, I had to get a new passport. Make sure that if you do need a passport that you're getting it with um, three months before your journey. Passports take a long time to come in the mail. 
I applied for mine in July, like July 1st, and I still haven't gotten it, and it is September 10th. It's in the mail, I actually just checked it and I should be getting it any day now, but I'm just saying that's like how long it's gonna take for you to get a passport. Luckily for my voyage, since I'm not going anywhere that needs a visa, I don't need to apply for any visas, which is super cool. Some other things I may need to do though is get like currency from that country and the packing process is so daunting, but I'll be fine. <laughs> so after you're approved from your university, you're really in the final home stretch. So you just really get to focus on um, packing, planning, finishing up any credits that you may need. It's really important that you do well on your classes before your voyage and after so that you don't have to retake any classes because if you have to retake any classes from the time that you're gone or the time that you're about to leave, you might have to add on another semester. Another factor you're going to want to look at when you're studying abroad is what time is the best for you. You can do it as a whole semester, you can do it for a few weeks, you can do it for half of a semester, or you can do it in the summer. The summer is really good for people that cannot leave any time during the academic year due to classes that are just not available. Easy way to fix that was just to save my electives and I'm going to be taking things like history, psychology, super simple classes. So after you do all that, you're pretty much all set. Studying abroad is such a awesome and cool experience. Most of the time it is the same cost as your regular tuition. A misconception a lot of people get is that studying abroad is expensive. Why, yes it is expensive, it also can be affordable with scholarships, saving up money, Personally, I had three jobs this summer, but I also knew I wanted to do SAS for like two years now, so I've really been just saving up my money, and now I feel so comfortable going. Studying abroad is doable. You just have to put your mind to it. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. If you guys have any more questions on the study abroad process or anything else you guys want me to talk about, just comment down below and I'll be so happy to help you guys out. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!